This is the third in the series of Voltage Lab 2 walkthroughs. In this video, we're going to take a look at the function generators, and these are really cool. If you've never used a function generator before, they can be envelopes, they can be envelope followers, they can be LFOs, they can be oscillators. So I'll just run you through what we can do with these. And these do so much, it's difficult to know where to start, but if we start um, looking at it as a basic envelope, it's pretty much the simplest thing you can do with it, I think. So um, we've got a trigger in coming from the keyboard. got a fall which is effectively the release and we've got a rise which is like the attack this response knob here changes the attack and the release from exponential to linear to logarithmic so you can get really long times out of it it's not all about little snappy triggers And in this, we've got different modes. We've got a trigger mode, a sustain mode, and a loop mode. In trigger mode, doesn't matter how long you hit the key, it's just a simple trigger. In sustain mode, we can hold the note on. So let's have a bit of a longer tap. So of course you can use that like an ASR envelope, that is attack, sustain, release. And you can control the VCA without all the dynamics processors, anything you like really. But then we have a loop mode as well. So you can hear there, that's going into audio rates. And actually to show you the rise and the fall and what you can do with that, um, we will take the output of that as an audio signal. So we'll take this from there and just put it straight into the output. So when we're in linear, it's a triangle. And you can turn that into a sort of sawtooth. So there's loads you can do with these, and yes, they are two oscillators. Um, we can pitch those oscillators, we can tune them to whatever we like using the CV inputs, and because obviously as you're changing the, the fall rate, you're changing the, the pitch. So we'll go from the attenuator output into the fall CV in. So if you're careful, you can tune this just like an oscillator. And you can change the tone of it. But really, that's just a nice way of showing you um, the different response curves we can get from it. And I've got the drum machine out here because you can use it as an envelope follower. So I've got the output of the drum machine going into the amplifier because it's not loud enough to trigger it on its own. The amplifier is going into the... Let's put the amplifier into the input. So as I play this, we can see things are happening. Let's put it onto trigger mode now. And let's use that to modulate the dynamics processor. And then turn it up. That's listening to the input signal, creating triggers, and from them, creating envelopes. So, envelope follower. They can also interact between each other. We've got different trigger conditions here. So, trigger condition one there is 
trigger for function generator one will trigger function generator two. On this, the rise, when we get to the top of the rise of function generator one, we will trigger function generator two. And likewise with this, when we hit the end of the fall, we will trigger function generator two. And we'll have a little play with the LFO just to show you quickly what's happening there. Okay, here I'm using function generator one to modulate dynamics controller one. And I've got the LFO triggering it. So if we turn that up. Now these will only trigger once on the rise at a portion. So at the minute we're just playing exactly the same time as the LFO. But if we make the rise long enough, we can divide this. So that's playing every other step or every other pulse. It's a clock divider. So yeah, just another little thing you can do with it. Uh, let's take a look at these trigger conditions then. Here. So it's a shared input basically. Or we can modulate it at the rise sections. So it's not hitting there exactly the same time as this function generator one. So you can see that's already triggered and this triggers later. Or we can do it with the fall, same thing. So it's doing it at a slightly different time. Or at the input and the rise. So we get a nice, interesting rhythms. or with the rise, the input and the fall, or the rise and the fall, so any combination of those really, so. So if we look at the LFO, we're getting three hits per cycle of the LFO. And we can obviously change the rhythm on that. And these little MIDI signs here obviously means it will be triggered by MIDI or not. So yeah, the function generators, there's a lot you can do with those. And we've got rise and fall CV in for both, so obviously you can do things. I've been doing things quite quick there just to show you on the quick video, but obviously if you've got things um, happening over long periods of time and you can change the full CV rate and stuff like that. We did use it actually, didn't we, to look at the, at the pitch, but you can change the release on envelopes and stuff like that for you. What should we use it on? Should we put the triangle from that, the full? So there you have it, function generators. There's lots to do, lots to play with. Very, very useful tool indeed. Other things I've not mentioned on the function generator, everything was in the way um, while I was doing that. Uh, we've got um, end of rise. So the trigger condition end of rise, we've got that as an output uh, from function generator one. And we've got the end of the fall from function generator two. As well as these little combinations in the center. So we've got the plus all, which is the highest value of one or two. We've got the difference between one and two. We've got the mix, so then blended together. And then we've got the negative output from the mix. And we've also got inverted outputs for each of them as well, which are quite handy because it's almost like you've got two outputs. If you're using them as, a, as an LFO, for example, you've got one positive and one negative, but um, so the 100, 180 degrees out of phase, but essentially you've got two outputs really.